James Lupton for Pro Boxing Fans. I'm delighted to be joined with Maurizio Suleiman for the second day running. Maurizio, how are you today? Fine, fine. I'm doing very well. How about yourself? I'm very good, thank you. Now, a lot has happened in the last 24 hours since we last spoke. Um, so let's jump straight into the, the big news. Uh, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, the ball seems to have started rolling there with that fight. Obviously, we know we're still a long way from that. Talk to me about that fight. How big is that fight with all your years in boxing? And we know you're a big boxing fan. Just where does this sit on the scale of big time boxing? Well, we live in a new era of uh, social media and uh, the way of promoting uh, the events is, is apparently different. So it, it seems to be a, a huge event. Um, the, the fight for an undisputed uh, heavyweight championship seems to be of great interest to the public. And now with two British fighters would uh, generate a huge event for, for the UK and the world and their attention. Absolutely. Now, how big would it be for the WBC, obviously, with the title being fought for in that fight? I am sorry? How big would it be for the WBC as a title would be fought for in that fight? Well, it's a, it's a very interesting fight. You know, the heavyweight division is booming. There are so many great fights that can take place uh, that uh, are, we're back to a great golden era of the heavyweight. Uh, we have, uh, of course, Tyson Fury, we have Joshua, we have Wilder, we have Dillian White, we have Ortiz, we have Podvetkin, uh, some of the young uh, heavyweights coming up, uh, Joyce, Aveca. So it's a very interesting, very um, challenging and great fights uh, for, the, for the sport of boxing in the heavyweight division. Absolutely. You mentioned there Dillian White. What will that fight do to Dillian's mandatory position? You know, I have, uh, I have seen the, the press release and, and the comments, and it's obvious. It says that he has to do, Fury has to do the fight with Wilder, and then he mentions Joshua next year. So that's completely open. Uh, I'm, gonna go, I'm not going to go into speculations, into this, this and that. The WBC position is very clear. We have our champion, Fury. He's got that commitment uh, to do Wilder. And then we have the mandatory title defense uh, as a schedule within our rules. Now, how strong will your stance be in that mandatory defense? I know the WBO president has said... Joshua will have to face Usyk for the mandatory, as a mandatory, excuse me, or he'll have to drop that title. How strongly will your stance be towards the Dillian White fight? It's, it's obvious. It's the rules and it's uh, public. Uh, I have uh, continuously stated that uh, Dillian White is an interim champion, mandatory challenger, and that the date is February 2021, 20, uh, given all this situation, we will address every single division. Uh, I mean, the situation of the pan pandemic. Uh, we will address every single division with the specifics of each one. And I have, I'm tired of saying it. So, uh, Dylan White is the interim champion and mandatory contender. If the mandatory position for Dylan was to be again postponed, does Dillian have any opportunity to appeal that mandatory position? Well, he's right now uh, with lawyers against uh, the WBC. So I am not, I'm not certain what it is about. Uh, we did not create the pandemic. We did not uh, impose any delays on anything. Uh, I don't know what's, what, it's, what it, it is all about. All I know is the WBC's position it's very clear and it's public and it's been consistent. So uh, I have no idea what Dillian and his uh, management and promotion wishes to accomplish or do. We are clear and we stand uh, strong with, with our position. Fantastic. 
Um, just going on to what we mentioned yesterday, we'll get it all done in this one video today. Um, VADA, they came back without the announcement of testing fighters. Again, just remind me of your, your role in that and their comeback. Yeah, we are, we are back. Uh, as a matter of fact, we tested Carl Frampton, uh, Conlan. Uh, they were tested uh, yesterday. So we're back uh, now that uh, it is safe, it is doable. We are testing in several countries of the world and uh, our program is back, back in, in its feet. As I said, uh, I, I, I have no regrets on, on the position that we took in suspending uh, the testing for a couple of months. We were not going to put the doping collectors in the street. Uh, with the dangers of the COVID-19 and much less we were going to expose the fighters to strangers going into their homes uh, with a possible uh, danger. So I'm, I'm very happy we did that and I'm very happy we're back in the testing. And in fact, we are happy because VADA is even in the possibility of doing COVID-19 testing at the same time they do the anti-doping. So this is uh, things that uh, are interesting and, and we are happy to be announcing them. Absolutely. It's all very positive as well. Do you appreciate why people wasn't happy at the time that you announced that they would be stopping the testing to give potential opportunity no, to people? No, to no, I, I, don't, I don't understand it. Uh, there, are, there are greater challenges, problems, and concerns at that time. I mean, right now we are all concerned, but uh, specifically two, three months ago, we were much more concerned about the pandemic, about being confined, about the so many concerns out there for the health. So I don't, I don't understand anyone uh, taking that road of uh, accusing uh, without any proof of any single person trying to take advantage and dope when, uh, when the lives of millions are at risk. Uh, we go that way. Absolutely. Now, we did see the return of boxing this week with Top Rank putting on a show uh, at the MGM Grand. How exciting a time is it for boxing to be back after we have been starved of the sport for so long? It's very exciting. Uh, I was very happy on Tuesday. And tonight, there's another card at the MGM. And, and uh, following weeks, they will have activity. Mexico City seems that uh, June 20, there will be a card. And then on for three, four weeks uh, without public. Uh, it seems that uh, the UK will start in, in July. Japan will start in July. So the light at the end of the tunnel is here now. We can see activity. We can get to talk about boxing. We can get to, to get results for ratings. And uh, just uh, the machinery, the key has been turned on, starting to move, and we're very excited about it. How long before we can see some title, uh, sanctioned title fights from the WBC coming back? Well, I, I can see uh, maybe end of July or August to start having uh, world championship fights, uh, world level fights taking place. And how long before the possibility of flying other opponents into other countries. At the moment, there are travel bans still around parts of the world. For example, you mentioned earlier, Carl Frampton and Mick Conlon, they couldn't fly over to America to take place or to take part in any of the top ranked shows this early on. How long before we can start seeing those sort of fights and international bouts? It all depends uh, because this is a, the restrictions by the government of each country. Uh, nobody else has control over such restrictions. Um, I, I, I've seen uh, fighters flying to other countries. It's happening. Uh, it all depends on, on the specific countries. So I, I can see uh, the movement. For example, a couple of Mexican fighters are going to the USA. Uh, Australian fighters flew from Australia to the USA to take place in the top rank shows. Uh, I know Victor Postol is trying to get to the United States to resume his fight against Ramirez. So I, I see uh, uh, a very clear uh, opening 
uh, sooner rather than later in, in the world stage of the sport. And also, you mentioned a moment ago, obviously, Top Rank are doing two shows a week currently. How exciting is that for fans to see such regularity in the sport? Well, it, it, it's a breath of fresh air for all of us. Uh, so much uncertainty, so much uh, bad news, negativeness. But now we can see it's coming along and uh, we're just excited for every uh, announcement that is coming and hoping that uh, everything continues to, to move forward. Also, how important is it for not just the fighters, but the fans as well to have that little bit of release from the pandemic and all the negativity to have something positive to see their sport back on? It's, it's tremendous. Uh, uh, speaking as a fan of sports, I'm tired of watching the World Cup from the 80s and the 90s and those great uh, memories, great fights from the past. Now we need uh, live action. Uh, we need to have something to look for for the weekend. Uh, sports play a major role on, on a personal uh, feeling of fans around the world, of millions. Uh, it creates a, a great positive uh, feeling. It creates a hype. It creates a, a enthusiasm. So to see sports getting back on track, it's a tremendous aid for the mental health of all of us. Absolutely. And the last topic is, we spoke about it again yesterday, exhibitions. The excitement of the return of Mike Tyson and potentially Evander Holyfield. Again, we mentioned yesterday you are good friends with Mike Tyson. How excited are you for this comeback? I am very, very excited uh, in all terms. I'm excited for Mike Tyson, who has uh, found a new life, again, through boxing. Uh, Mike Tyson, the youngest ever to capture the heavyweight title of the world, uh, fell into a difficult time slot uh, like anyone can. And now through boxing, he's exciting. He's uh, feeling well. He's not depressed. He has lost all the weight. And he's just uh, very excited about being back into a life uh, where he feels well. Uh, he has announced that he wants to do exhibition uh, for charity. So how can someone be against that? We are very motivated to see Mike Tyson well and very motivated for him to try to do good for others. He's trying to do charity event uh, that will benefit so many people. Uh, when we saw him in a... 10, 15 second um, social media clip. The whole world exploded and, and uh, looked into it and got very excited. I'm very happy for Mike Tyson. We will fully support him in this uh, process of exhibitions if we can do something because uh, it is what boxing is all about, to lend your hand to others. And talk to me about the health and safety aspect of it. Um, you mentioned to me previously that he will have to go through medicals almost like a pro would. Yes, absolutely. Uh, even if it's an exhibition, the Boxing Commission, the local authority, will certainly require thorough medicals. In boxing, uh, there are specific medicals uh, for any uh, person over the age of 40. So over 40, you have to do additional testing and uh, I am certain that Mike Tyson and whoever thinks of doing exhibitions will have to comply with those requirements. Uh, I just saw Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, who is 57 years old, do an exhibition with Jorge Arce. They did one in December, one in March, both events for charity, and the people loved it. Uh, 12,000 people showed up to see them do an exhibition in the ring. And it was very fun, very positive. And uh, I think this is honorable for them to do charitable work. And for Mike Tyson to, to try to do something like that is very honorable. And we will fully support it, as I said before. Now, it's a lot of people saying Evander Holyfield will be the opponent, or it's rumoured to be the opponent. 
in the social media day and age, as you mentioned, the, the hype and the hysteria around the fight, does it make it obviously bigger because it's going to be potentially Holyfield? Well, of course, Holyfield uh, uh, is a tremendous attraction. When you put Holyfield and Tyson together for a dinner engagement, it's, it's attractive. Uh, much more to save to see him inside the ring with, uh, with an exhibition in line. Uh, I think uh, it's something that uh, calls the attention for the public. But uh, regardless who it is with Mike Tyson, his intentions to do char charitable work is uh, to be praised and to be supported, uh, regardless of who goes into the ring with him. Absolutely, I agree. Marita said that is everything I wanted to ask you. Thank you again for your time today. We appreciate you speaking to Pro Boxing Fans. Thank you, James. Uh, have a great day, and uh, it's a pleasure and an honor for me to, to be in your program.